Hello everyone, welcome to Native Mobile Bits. In today's video, we are going to explore one very important topic, how our applications can communicate with our server efficiently. So if you are an Android developer, I am sure that you have heard these sentence countless time. Can you make this API call? And whenever someone tells you that can you make this API calls, our first instinct is we can use any popular library like Retrofit, Volley or OKHttp. OK but how we can do this without using any third party library? So that's the agenda for today's video. I am going to show you how we can make an API call without using any third party library using Kotlin in our Jetpack application. And if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to my channel. And now let's start today's video. So now to deal with network, we need to use these two permission. First will be internet. Okay. This permission will allow us to access internet. Okay. And then our second permission will be to use network state. Okay. This will allow us to check whether we are using Wi-Fi or a valid mobile internet connection. We'll use these two permissions. And now let's go inside our code and let's define one package networking. Now the first important thing is instead of wasting resource, if there is no valid internet, we will check that if there is a valid internet connection, then we will go ahead and make one API call. Else we will just show one message to the user that there is no valid internet connection. So to do that, we need one class which can help us to check if there is a valid internet connection, right? So we can define one class and we can just name it as network checker. And this class will be responsible to let us know that if there is one valid internet connection present. Now inside this class, we will take one parameter connectivity manager. Okay. This connectivity manager will be responsible to allow us to check the information about current network. Okay. So inside this, we can define one function perform action. Let's say user want to perform any action. So user can just pass the action as a high order function. Okay. And if internet is present, we will perform this action. Okay. This one. But before that, we will check that if there is one valid internet connection. So we can just check has valid internet connection. This one, we can call one function and then we can perform this action if everything is fine. Now we can define this function here. Okay, this will return one boolean type. Okay, now inside this function, we can check about the current active network with the help of our connectivity manager. Okay, we can use this and we can get access to the current active network. Now we want to check the capabilities of this network. So we can define one variable capabilities and with the help of connectivity manager itself, we can use this method to get the capability of the current network. Okay. Like this. Now we can return based on this capability. So we have this method that capabilities dot has transport and inside this we can pass network capabilities dot has Wi-Fi. Okay. We can add one safety check using Elvis operator. If our capabilities are empty or null. So we can return false that our internet connection is not having any valid capability. Else we can have this capability dot has transport. We can check that if it's a valid Wi-Fi network or so we can use cellular for a valid mobile connection. And then we can also check the same thing with the help of VPN as well. Like if we are using VPN and there is one valid mobile network. So we can check using these things, right? So now this function is enough. It will provide us enough detail that if there is a valid network or not. Now let's create one object for our network checker. Okay. We'll use lazy initialization and we will just use the class which we created just now. We will take the parameter we want connectivity manager with the help of system service. Okay. We need to pass the class name and now we have one object for our network checker. Now let's create one new class remote API. 
basically this will be responsible to make our API call for now. We will update this with view model and all in future videos. But for now we are going to use this class. Okay, inside this let's define one method get fact. Okay, we are going to use this API. So this is the URL we are going to use. So we can define one variable base URL. Okay, and we can remove this for now. This is our base URL. Now inside this method we need to start one new thread so that we don't block our main UI thread. Okay. To do that we can use thread with the help of runnable and then to start this thread we can use this start method. This will do the exact same thing. It will just run a new thread. Now inside this thread we are going to open one connection with our server with the help of this base URL. Now inside this thread we are going to start one connection. Okay, so we'll create one variable connection. We'll use this URL from java.net and here we will specify our base URL. Okay, and we will open this connection with the help of this method open connection and we'll use this as HTTP URL connection. Okay. Now we have one connection with our base URL. Now we need to add few things inside this method. So we can use this connection dot request method first of all. So our method is going to be get method. Okay. So as our fact API this is get method. We have specified the method as get. Now we need to specify the type of data in which we want to consume or send some data. So that will be application slash JSON. So we can use this connection dot set request property. Okay. And we'll specify first of all content type. And this will be of application slash JSON. Okay. We'll use the same thing for accept. And this will also be of type application slash JSON. Now we need to set one timeout for connection establishment. So let's say our connection timeout should be 10 seconds. Okay. For reading the output from this connection, we will also set one timeout, read timeout that will also be of 10 seconds. Okay. We want to pass some data inside this connection. So it can be any key which we want to pass inside this URL as we have one header inside this right. So we need to pass this key. Okay. So I am going to add this with the help of request property itself. Okay. This will be our key. So instead of exposing my API key what I will do I will just go inside here and I will create one class. Okay. And I will name it as app constant. Okay. I will use this as singleton and then inside this I will define one variable API key and basically this will be one string key right. So I will define the value here inside my video from my profile. So I have copied this I have added inside my project. Now I can use this key from app constant dot api. So if you want this api key you can also create one account here and you can use your own api key in place of this api key. Okay. Now we have added all the things. So our connection is ready. Now we need to read the data from this connection. So for that let's use one try catch. Okay. And for now let me define like this. So now we can read the data with the help of connection dot input stream. Okay. So we can use one reader variable and inside this variable we can use input stream reader and we can pass this connection dot input stream. Okay. So basically it will allow us to read the data from this input stream. Now we will use reader dot use and it will give us the data basically we can write something like input data okay and then we can create one response variable so we are using buffer reader here so that it can read small small chunks of the data one step at a time then we will have all the data inside this buffer reader now inside this we will use this for each line so that we get a single line of data at a time and then we will add this inside our response 
so as this is our string builder we need to just append this line okay and then we will trim the space from the end like this entire response will be appended inside our response variable okay then we can just try to print this for now so let's create one tag here for now we can just use this and for our log we can use this tag and we can write in success and we can use here our response dot to string just to see that what response we are getting okay we will add one log inside exception also in error and we can use exception dot localize message okay okay so our api call method is ready we can come to our main activity and let's say this is our main composable so here we can just try to call that remote api dot get fact so let's just run our program so our application is running and if we just try to use this tag remote api in locket okay so we are getting this success response okay and it is coming inside this success and we are having this kind of response so there is one fact inside one array and object and this is the same structure so one one important thing which we need to do here inside our connection is that once we are done with our connection here right so we need to close this connection connection dot disconnect so that once we get the data here inside our try block right or if we get any exception we come inside catch so after this success or error state we are just closing the connection so that's it for today's video guys in this video we have learned how we can make an api call without using any third party library if you enjoy this video please like share and subscribe and please also share your wonderful thoughts in the comment section i will see you in the next video